It's great to have the AMT back in Detroit. We have the know-how and the determination to solve problems. More than ever, we need to act in innovative, creative, and new ways, simultaneously refuting our critics, advancing our values, connecting with community, and proposing solutions. That's solution-driven unionism. We have the community support, we have the parent support to provide the schools St. Paul children deserve. Our approach in St. Paul was that our contract was going to be the most powerful document we had to meet the needs of St. Paul's kids. Collective bargaining becomes that powerful tool for problem solving because we can institutionalize our expertise in a contract. AFT conventions in the early years were a hotbed of ideas about improving education. However, teachers' influence on their working conditions was limited until they gained collective bargaining rights in the 60s and 70s. In later contracts, they sought to expand, to get into educational issues, essentially bargain on behalf of children. The school board response was, that's our job. Unfortunately, the farther away you were from the classroom, the more say you had about it. The teachers were pretty much muzzled, so we wanted to change that. In 1973, I had come to the conclusion that there's got to be a better way to evaluate and mentor teachers than what existed. My next question is, well, why aren't we using our union to get what people want here? And I put it on the bargaining table, what, eight years or something like that? Finally, a lawyer bargaining for administration saw merit in the idea. And in 1981, the Toledo Plan was created, which pairs new hires with an experienced teacher called an intern consultant who mentors and evaluates them. It's giving all the support possible to a novice in teaching to succeed. With this plan, you know, I always know that I can call my intern consultant and that she's going to be there to help me through. Following two semesters, the consultant makes a recommendation, a second one-year contract or the person has not met our standards and should not continue in the district. We've dismissed all four, over 400 teachers, mm -hmm. many of them with tenure, and it's the most popular thing we do with our members. Having my union create this program, it makes me feel like they're concerned about what I'm doing in my classroom. They're not just saying she'll find her way. I appointed a commission to study and bring back a report on what we felt was a decline in education. The 1983 report, A Nation at Risk, warned of a rising tide of mediocrity. Most of the education establishment saw the report as an attack. First of all, they didn't say any of the things Reagan said. They said, oh, they supported vouchers and all this. None of that is in that document. We've got to do something in terms of addressing the current deficits in the- Al, instead of doing the knee-jerk response to these things. He said, well, there are things in here that we should look at. Go on the national airwaves and start talking about our educational system does need to be revamped. We need to pour more resources into education. More than one million teachers short by the year 1992, so the American Federation of Teachers is trying to broaden the profession's appeal. Salary attracts the kind of people that we want to come into the profession. AFT created National Board Certification for Teachers and took ownership of reform at the national and local level. In 1987, we negotiated a contract. Teachers agree to going the extra mile for students, and that teacher would take that group of students would become an expert on the students, so every time that anyone else in the school had a concern, they would go to somebody very knowledgeable about that student. We also established a school-based planning team at every school. Innovation at the local level even included reimagining the collective bargaining agreement when it became a barrier to progress. Feeling free to attack institutionally questions that I think we're afraid to ask. Our thinking was, how can we free up teachers? The living contract enables us to change on the fly, to recognize that we need to be flexible and be agents of change within the contract. Monitor the contract, and at those monthly meetings, we saw something that wasn't working. Let's work on that. Our bargaining sessions, you would know who the president of the union is, who the president of the school board is, who the superintendent of schools is, because it's all problem solving. 
this shared decision-making model actually started much earlier in higher education, where it was written into the Fashion Institute of Technology's first contract in 1967. And it talked about the faculty having governance in academics, student services, curriculum. We had a new student evaluation process. Shared governance means there is not a new instrument forced on us. We come up with the instrument. So that's part of our ownership of our work. Short staffing has to go ahead. Our members know what the solutions are. We can, as a group, be heard in our state legislature. They were saying after a mother delivers their child, they have 24 hours and they have to get out. And we said that that's insane. No one evaluated what the condition of the mother was. One of the first bills we got passed, mothers could stay for as long as they needed to stay. Safe patient handling, whistleblower protection. We fought to get safe needles. We would have hospitals say, well, you know what? It's gonna cost us about 90 cents more, and so we can't afford it, and we don't wanna pay that price. More than ever, we need to push back against these corporations and restore the idea of patient care and on community needs and not on corporate greed or on profits. And some things that need to be done to improve the education of poor children. I'd like to propose an important step in this direction, and I call it Kindergarten Plus, to provide disadvantaged children with the opportunity to start kindergarten during the summer months. Well, I thought it was a great idea. My first bill was Kindergarten Plus. It's become a program that, that everyone talks about because of the results. Incoming kindergarten through third graders can come and avoid that summer slide. We can catch those kids who are struggling a little bit sooner. I think it's a great thing that it's a union-inspired initiative. It kind of shows that we as union members, as teachers, know what we're talking about. Our members' jobs are hard, and they require compassion, energy, resiliency, and a wide range of skills. So frankly, there are no silver bullet solutions to the challenges we face. When we're solution driven, we're working with management, we're engaging with community, and we're using our professional voice to make a difference in the lives of the people we serve. Solution driven unionism isn't only about improving our work environment. It's also about seeing and addressing needs in our communities, especially in crisis situations. In the mid-1970s, New York City was in economic shambles. With schools falling apart and classes of up to 60 students because of massive layoffs, teachers voted to strike. They were able to avert the worst of the cuts. Will be a municipal default in New York. The city was about to go bankrupt, and so the city leaders were desperate and didn't know where to turn. It was important to the teachers and to the whole community to make sure that the city survived. The city was at, literally at the 11th hour. Shanker crafts this ingenious deal where the teacher's retirement system pledged $150 million to city paper. It's really teachers and other public employees that make the investment in the city that saves it from defaulting. The UFT headquarters, 2nd Avenue Deli, came in with a whole tray of chopped liver and bagels and everything else, and on it was written, Thank you, UFT, for saving the city. Recently, Messina, New York, was facing their own economic crisis. Already dealing with the financial devastation from previous plant closings, they received some shocking news. Alcoa says it will close its smelting facility. It really was devastating. The next morning, my first thought was, OK, what are we going to do? Because this isn't going to happen. And the idea of the rally came up. I've never seen the solidarity as strong as it is here, and I got to thank the teachers. The AFT is with you to fight for our middle class. And they felt like because of the pressure we were putting on politicians, this was kind of the catalyst. This was the thing that turned the tides for them. Alcoa said they were going to keep the plant open. I celebrate our futures and what is to come of our North Country.